If you're a big swim team and you like to order a lot of gear, maybe you ought to check out Swim Outlet Team Division for these reasons. Swim teams receive a 10% discount on bulk orders. Swim teams or organizations get an 8% commission on referred sales. You'll also like their customization services, which is affordable and available at all times during the year for all team gear. With over 50,000 items in stock, you can get most anything you want. Swim Outlet Team Division. You need to try it out. You'll be glad you did. This is the Morning Swim Show for Thursday, January 30th, 2014. I'm your host, Jeff Cummings. Joining me on the show today will be Jim Kerr. He is the head swim coach at the Seton School in Virginia and is one of the men behind the Virginia Independent School State Swimming and Diving Championships that will be held in about two weeks. He's been a part of several of these championships and to give us a little history behind this meet, Jim, Kerr's, Jim Kerr joins us now in the Finis Monitor. Jim, it's good to see you. How are you today? All right, looking forward to having you back in Virginia in a couple of weeks, Jeff. Yes, I, I am looking forward to uh, doing the announcing on the live stream. And I remember when I first went two years ago, you know, it was such an exciting meet. All those kids just really put a lot into it, as every kid does at their, their end of season meet. It swimming's really getting fast in Virginia. Well, we'll talk about the state meet in a minute, but I want to know first off, how is the team at Seton looking? Are they getting ready and excited for state? Very excited. We just um, came off uh, a meet, a new meet, the East Coast Catholic Championships. And I have a young girls team that is looking very, very strong that finaled in all the relays. And I have an a eighth grade girl, Anna Canna, who is going to be one to watch out for. Um, her kickouts are just fabulous. And so as a result, uh, her 100 freeze dropped down to 56, which is not bad for an eighth grade girl. And she's uh, pushing a, a minute and 100 backstroke with those great kickouts. So uh, I'm very excited about her and, and all my girls because yeah. they'll be back for a couple more years. Yeah, it must be really exciting to see someone like Anna, who's only in eighth grade, knowing the potential that she has if she's already doing something great like underwater kicks as an eighth grader. Yes, it's great. Um, Why? Well, I, I have to say personally, I hope it warms up. I know you've had a couple, a couple of polar vortexes going through the area. I just, you know, being a, growing up in the Midwest and having our state meet in February, there's nothing worse than walking out of your hotel room and going to the van and then getting out of the van, going to the pool and in, you know, 10 degree weather. So I hope it's a little more, a little more pleasurable for everybody. Well, it's pretty cold in Virginia now. I'm Arkansas and it's even cold here. <laughs> well, it, it, I'm, I'm, from what I've heard, the polar vortex is, is at its end. So let's, let's hope for better temperatures. Um, let's talk about the, the state meet. Um, the Virginia Independent Schools uh, State Swimming and Diving Championships. Now, not many states have a separate division for private schools. What prompted Virginia to have this separate division? Um, you know, we, we have uh, our public schools are divided into single A, double A, triple A, like most states. And then all of the independent schools are grouped together in a separate athletic organization called VISAA, Virginia Independent Schools Athletic Association. And it's been that way for years and years and years. Um, one thing that's unique about Virginia, um, at least compared to other states I'm familiar with, my wife's from New York, for instance, is there's a huge proliferation of private schools in Virginia of every flavor and kind from, you know, very uh, expensive boarding schools with top quality educations and athletic programs like Woodbury Forest and Madeira to military academies like Fork Union Military Academy and Hargrave um, to big diocesan Catholic schools that you see in every state all the way down to small independent schools and the small Christian schools. There's, I don't even small Christian schools in Virginia um, and that diversity of education is one of the reasons I like to live in Virginia but it's also one of the reasons why it makes sense to have separate athletic division um, from the public school division yeah because otherwise that those state meets if, if you know you had the public and private schools would you'd have to go three days long just to fit everything in I would imagine yeah yeah, we have uh, 500 kids hitting the qualifying times, 
that we set, and we'll have about 50 teams participate, and there's probably 65 schools in VISA, V-I-S-A-A, that have some sort of swimming program. So uh, it's pretty it's pretty widespread. Is is that an acceptable like number of swimmers to have at the meet? Can it be bigger and still be okay, or do you guys look to say maybe we should um, make the times a little bit faster so we can have a little bit smaller meet and not have to you know run it into longer prelim sessions? We actually um, uh, control the size of the meet. We, we for qualifying times we use the three year average of the thirty second place time for individual events and the three year average of the twenty eighth place time for relays. And so we could adjust the size of the meet by adjusting that formula. But uh, that formula has worked very well. And we find that that after experimenting quite a bit for the years I ran it, um, it, uh, it got very big and then a little smaller. And we had some problems with fire marshals. And um, so I think we found a happy medium at, at the size we are right now. And, and so now we can manage that size by managing the qualifying times to an actual formula instead of just a vote. Right. It's kind of the way they do the um, NCAA championships. In a way. Yeah, a except we set the time. We have to guess if it's going to be 30 seconds. So sometimes we get 28, sometimes we get 36, you know. Mm -hmm. So but it, it works out. Plus, um, when we have the meet at the Freedom Center, um, we use 10 lanes for prelims and eight for finals. So the 10 lanes really allows us to uh, get a lot of people through. Right. Do you guys have any kind of rivalry going on with the public school division you know kind of comparing times and you know kind of pointing them saying we're better this year you guys are better but we're going to get you next year you know i've always i've always dreamed of the idea of putting together a virtual meet because i know that um it would be very close looking at the triple a results the public schools tend to be deeper um but no faster you know so they're you know, their 16th place person is going to be faster than our 16th place person, but their first place person is not going to be any faster than our first place person. Um, other than that, other than that kind of dream of one day doing a virtual meet, there's really almost no overlap at all. Um, uh, now, a lot of them practice together because, of course, a lot of the top swimmers are USA kids. So, you know, they're on teams with public school kids. And I myself schedule regular season meets. Um, and I include some of the local public schools that uh, we're friendly with. But beyond that, it's not really uh, much overlap at all. Okay. Um, you know, this meet, like, like I said, when I went two years ago, I, was, I wouldn't say I was surprised by the, the, the times and the speed of the kids, but, you know, it just really impressed me because, uh, you know, you hear a lot about, you know, some of the kids that were going to public schools and then over in the D.C. area, you hear about that a lot. Um, but, you know, I, I would imagine you or you and all the other coaches are really happy to see a lot of these kids go on to do some great stuff. You know, you've got um, some swimmers who've gone on to do great things at the NCAA level. Oh, yeah, we had, um, I mean, I can think of countless examples. Probably the one of the more stunning examples, uh, you might recall Stuart Ferguson down at Auburn who won these in 100 breast. Um, and he uh, still holds the Virginia Independent Schools under breast record. He also holds a 53 record. I'll never forget the swim. Um, you know, we have kids all over the SEC and uh, all the way down to many um, Division three, three swimmers. Swimming in Virginia has gotten incredibly fast. I was looking at results from 2002, and the winner of the boys' medley relay in 2002 would have gotten 13th last year. Wow. Um, so... Uh, I think that's a testament not just to the growth of high school swimming, but the growth of USA swimming in Virginia with the uh, Northern Virginia teams like um, NCAP, which uh, formerly Curl Burke, and um, uh, QDD, and down in Richmond, uh, Nova, and Poseidon, and uh, SwimQuest, and down in Tidewater, um, you know, the teams down there, uh, it's, it's just really uh, stunning how much swimming has advanced in this state. Yeah, and I think, I think that is really good to see. Um, I, I went to a private high school, and I always heard from my public school friends that, you know, they always thought, oh, you go to a private school, obviously you guys have better resources for your athletic teams. Does that perception exist for you guys in Virginia? Um, no, um, and the reason is, is because it is 
so highly variable. In the public schools, there's a set amount of resources that are allocated equally, and the politicians ensure they're allocated equally. In the private schools, the variation is huge. You go from the extremely well-funded programs in some of these boarding schools um, all the way down to a school like, like mine, for instance, where um, we take no money from the school at all. Um, all of the coaches, including me, are volunteers. Um, and we run our program just with internal resources. We run all our meets with internal resources. Um, and so, so that might be true in some cases, but it's definitely not true in, in others. In the small Christian schools that, that compete at states, it's certainly not the case. Do you ever find that, that the fact that you don't take funds from school resources, is that, do you feel limited by what you can do or does that even, does that even enter your, your mind at all? No, actually the opposite. Um, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. Um, and so are a lot of the people that help me run the swim team. So uh, I actually prefer it that way. Um, that's, that's how we've developed the type of meets we have. We host most of our meets during the year, and we've created several statewide meets. We uh, host uh, Northern Virginia Catholic High School Championships now. We host a statewide um, junior varsity invitational. We host a statewide um, meet just for Division II schools, the smaller schools like ourselves, so we can start to build some rivalries amongst that level of schools. And we do that, and we can do that at Seton um, just because we think like entrepreneurs and uh, probably because at our core we are entrepreneurs. Yeah, that's, that's a good way to put it. Um, like I said, I'm looking forward to this meet. Is there, tell me some swimmers that I should be looking out for, everybody else should be looking out for when they watch the stream. Okay, well, on the girls' side, it's, it's going to be pretty easy to spot um, three in particular. Um, Rini Moshos is from a, a small private school in the town I live in, Warrington, Virginia. Um, she uh, won the 100 free as an eighth grader. In last year as a freshman, she set the state record at 56 and 100 back. Um, and uh, so she, and, she, and this year, I, it wouldn't surprise me if she swam in breaststroke and won the state championship in breaststroke. She's incredibly versatile. You remember Mary Catherine Kish from Collegiate School and who's, who's got multiple independent school records. I think she's going to be a sophomore this year. And Kylie Jordan from Madeira, who was actually featured, I saw in Swimming World magazine, she was the swimmer of the week one, one week. Um, is an incredible butterflyer, and that has really led to um, some real prowess in uh, 200 IM too, which she won both those events and set both the state records last year. So I'd look for her. Plus, um, Summer Harris is a, quite a breaststroker from St. Catharines. How about on the, the guy's so those side? Are the, the guy's side is much wider. Um, uh, probably the, the one... Fork Union Military Academy uh, always comes up with a big, powerful group of boys. Um, I see their ads in Swimming World all the time. And they got a, um, a kid, Ali Kalafalia. I'm, I'm not exactly sure how to say it, but um, he was 45 low and 100 free last year and uh, 52 and 100 back. I'd I'd uh, I'd look for him. Nick Schweitzer from uh, Woodbury Forest was a 155 2 IM. Ben Gorski from Bishop Ireton was right there. Um, Chris Outlaw from uh, O'Connell, and then a kid I th think that you probably haven't seen. His name is Alec Morin. He's from a small Catholic school in Fredericksburg um, called St. Michael, and I expect he'll go 21 low and 50 free and uh, surprise an awful lot of. An awful lot of people. Also, Henry Falls from St. Chris and Townley Halls from uh, Benedictine. Those are some of the names I'd be looking for uh, as you're uh, commentating on the meet. Well, I'm looking forward to saying those names. I remember some of those names from two years ago, so it's going to be great to uh, see how well they progressed. It's going to be fun. Yes. It's well, going to be a fast meet. Lots of records, I expect. Well, Jim, uh, thanks for the, the, uh, the perspective on the Virginia Independent Schools uh, state meet. Before we get to go, though, we've got to submit you to the final five. These are five questions we ask all of our guests on the show. Um, uh -oh. Yeah, it's putting you on the hot seat, Jim. First question. All if right. you could change the order of strokes in the individual medley, how would you change it? Um, 
I would put backstroke first. With a backstroke start or a forward start? With a backstroke start. Okay. I, I wouldn't change it, but if I had to, I'd put backstroke first. Um, that's backstroke first. Okay. Um, outside of your current work as a coach and, as you said, an entrepreneur, uh, what career or job would you most like to have? Um, well, I'm probably unique in that question because I do have – I, my other job is not USA Swim Coach, um, so uh, I'm uh, I like I love being an entrepreneur and a private equity and real estate investor, and that's that's what gets me to places like Arkansas and where I am right now. So okay. that that's what I love to do, uh, working for myself. You, I think that's the dream. That's the American dream. Um, is there any career or job that you know you would not like to try? Um, USA Swimming Coach. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I remember taking one of my older boys to practice at 445 every morning before he could drive, thinking that I might also have to be the coach at 445, and that would not be on my short list of careers. I'm sure your audience is mostly those guys, so I, I can't tell you how much I admire what they give to our kids um, and how much I admire the kids who are willing to make that kind of sacrifice to accomplish what they accomplish but i'm sure a lot of the coaches who are watching would probably list 445 workout as one of the, the cons of their job yes <laughs> um if you could change or add any of the rules in the swimming rule book what would it be change or add there's a new rule where you can't touch the wall and breaststroke with your thumbs together um and i think that's silly okay I would get rid of that one. Okay. Last question for you, Jim. Where do you like to go for vacation? Um, I have a big family. Um, so uh, I like to vacation with family. For years, we used to, uh, my wife's from New York, we used to go to Lake George um, and uh, get some cabins and uh, do family kind of stuff. Um, uh, so that's that's my vacation. That sounds like a great Great way to spend some time off. Well, Jim, thanks so much for joining us and look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks in Manassas. All right, Jeff. Have a great day. You too. All right, and our thanks to you as well for joining us. As I mentioned, I will be doing play-by-play -play commentary for the live stream of the Virginia Independent Schools State Swimming and Diving Championships. Check with SwimmingWorld.com in the coming days for information on where to go to see the meet online. I'm Jeff Cummings, and we'll see you next time.